Welcome to a brand new series that I'm doing on GitHub and Git. So this video, I'm going to talk about what GitHub is, what Git is, how to use GitHub, and just the basics. An introduction to what it is and how you can use it. So if you go to the website, github.com, this is GitHub. It is a user-friendly website that allows developers to save copies of their work. That's in a nutshell. So I can be working from one location, have my code on my computer, and then I can push it up to GitHub. On GitHub, a copy of it will be saved, and then I can download that, sync it up someplace else, another computer, and then make changes to in that computer, upload that, GitHub will then keep track of the changes as I sync them. Every time I sync, every time I upload to GitHub, it is going to be keeping track of all the changes that I made. So it gives me a history. If I ever discover that I've made some major error, I can actually step back through the history and find a copy of the file that didn't have the problems that I now have. Um, I can also use GitHub to work with teams. So you can have multiple people who are working on a project and GitHub is the storage place for the project that everybody uses as the kind of main source of truth for the project. Here's the final version and then people will take bits and pieces and work on those and then upload the changes. Now, why is it called GitHub? Well, there is a uh, software called Git. Git is the kind of driving engine behind all this. GitHub is one of the websites that lets you store your Git projects. There's also GitLab and a few others as well, but GitHub is one of the more popular ones. So when you come to the website, uh, you can sign up right here, or if you click on the sign up, you'll come to this page and it's the same sort of thing. You fill out create an account, choose your plan. Um, there's paid plans, there's free plans. Um, the main difference between them is that with the paid plans, you also get to create private repos. And that means you can put projects on there and mark them as private so nobody else can see them unless they logged in or unless you invite them to the project, then they're allowed to see your code. The vast majority of stuff that you'll find on GitHub is actually public. People just put their projects there. People use it for their resumes. People use it to say, hey, look, this is something that I'm working on and I would like other people to help me so other people can contribute to your projects. Um, signing in, simple enough. Click on the sign in link and then we log in. Now, I'm on the uh, sort of main page now. If I come in here, I can take a look at my profile. It's going to give me sort of a, a rundown. I've got 64 repositories currently. Um, these are all different ones. If I click on the repositories tab, um, you'll see there's a big long list of repositories here. These are just things that I've worked on. Um, a lot of the times it's just code samples, things that <clears throat> I'm going to be using in another project. So I'll start working on those. Now, um, if you want to create a project on GitHub, come to the little plus sign up here. After you've created an account, after you've logged in, come to the little plus sign and say, hey, I want a new repository. Then it needs to know, what do you want to call it? So come up with a name. Uh, I'm just going to call it Learning GitHub. That's the name of my and this is just a sample repo for learning the basics of GitHub. Now here, public, private. So this is where you choose if you've got a paid plan or an educational plan. There's actually, uh, for students, there is a uh, free version of GitHub that gives you private repos as well. One last option here, which I do recommend, uh, initialize this repository with a readme. This is a text file, a markdown file. Uh, I will be doing another video in this series on markdown, what it is and how you can use it. Um, basically a text file where you can write instructions to your visitors to the repo. Um, 
how to download it, how to use it, what it is, you know, all the details about your repo. So I'll cr click create repo. And there we are. Now here's the readme.md. This is the markdown file that I was talking about. There's the title for my project, and this is the description that I typed. Those things were automatically put into the readme file for me. And right here, this is where I would have a list of all the files in my project. I've got one commit. Well, a commit is when you update your repo. When you put something new or you change something inside of it, that's called a commit. Um, branches. When I was saying before about working with a team, you could have multiple people working on the project. And <clears throat> as people go off to work on other features, what they will typically do is they will create a new branch. So the main project sits on the main branch and then, or the master branch, like right here, there's the master branch. We could create another branch right here if we wanted. Um, create a branch. The branch will have a copy of all the files. They edit the files that they want to change and then they merge that branch back into the main one. Kind of like the uh, icon you see here. So there's a main branch and then something off to the side and each one of those dots represents a change in the code. So you can go along, dot, 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 make some changes, and then you merge it back into the main branch. And right now there's one contributor. That's me. I can create new files like this. So edit the file. Let's give it a name, index.html. Okay, simple enough. Uh, well, I guess I may as well put a doc type and just the basic tags that we would have. Title, head, body, there we go. We've created our first HTML file here. Now, down at the bottom, commit. When you commit a new file, they've given you an idea for a title and then a description. So I like theirs. So and created index.html, just a first initial commit of the first web page. And you can write instructions here. Um, these are to reference later when you're trying to figure out, okay, what did I do at that point? What did I do in that commit? What did I change? What were the things that were fixed or broken in that commit? Well, hopefully you're not breaking things intentionally in your commits, but if you were to fix something, you'd put a description here about what you fixed and you'd list off, these are the files that I changed so you can quickly and easily tell that. So I'm gonna commit this directly to the master branch. I only have the master branch. I could create a new branch for it, but I'm just going to put it back in the master. We'll commit. And there we are. Now I've got two files inside of here. So we have two files in our repo. All right. Now, <clears throat> next step in working with this. GitHub, as I was saying, this is the online repository. It's the place where you keep everything. But you're also going to download and work locally with the files. If I jump into here, this tab, desktop.github.com. This is the desktop application to work with. Now you don't need it. You can do everything with GitHub from the command line, but um, this makes it much easier. So you can download for Mac, you can download for Windows. I already have it downloaded and installed. This is the application right here. Once you've downloaded it, you'll need to log in. It'll ask you for your credentials. So you use the same credentials that you use to log into the GitHub website. Inside here, we're going to clone. We want to clone a repository. That means create a copy. You're cloning something, you're copying it. I want to copy the website. Uh, uh, sorry, copy the repo from the website. That learning GitHub one. Now, if I look through here, I'm probably not going to see it yet. I haven't refreshed this list. And JKL, no, it is not there. So it's not here yet. Fair enough. I'm going to reload repositories. 
So that was in the file menu, reload repositories. That's just refreshing my list of one. So it's checking my account to see if there's anything new. And once again, we're going to clone. And there it is, learning GitHub. That's the one that I want to copy. So by doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it from the GitHub website. So inside code, I've got a GitHub folder here, and this is where I'm going to create my repo. So I picked the folder. Downloading this, cloning this is going to create a new folder for the project. So I click clone. Boom. There we are. Now I have, <clears throat> here's my history. There's the initial commit that had the readme file in it. And then our second commit created index.html. And there we are. So here's the initial commit. And here's the other commit. And this is where we are right now. Great. Master, that's the branch that we're on. History, you can, uh, that's what we're looking at right here. Commit uncommitted changes. This application is going to keep track of whether or not we actually <laughs> have made changes to this project, to this repo, this repository. So I'm going to jump over into brackets here. I had opened up that folder. That was the parent folder. Here's my repo right here. If I click on this, hey, there's my web page. So I can just, I'm going to fix the tabbing here, make that a little easier to read. And maybe I'm going to add a CSS file. So link rel style sheet href main.css. And let's put it inside of a CSS folder as well. All right. So we've updated this HTML file. I'm going to create a new folder in here called CSS. And inside that, we're going to create our main.css. Just going to put a few lines just to have something in, inside here. There we go. And uh, HTML font size will make it really huge. Actually, we should, uh, well, let's make this 48 pixels and make this 2 REM. So we've got 72 pixel font for our heading right here. Okay, now, two uncommitted changes. So it tracked what we did. The CSS, you'll notice this is all in green. It's all little plus signs down the side here. So hey, we've created the file. We've got everything that we need inside of here. Index.html, it's got red and green. It's got little minus signs and plus signs. These are things that we removed. So this was the original code, and this is the new code. So it keeps track of what it was and what it is. That's what the commit is. It's a description about what was changed and, and what was added, what was removed. So this is our second commit. Uh, so we added main CSS file and fixed indenting. Commit and sync master. Well, the commit, we know that's adding it to the project. What is the sync? Well, you can see up here it says syncing. That is pushing my changes up to GitHub. So if I jump back to website. Let's go over to our repo. This is what it was originally, two commits. If I refresh this now, three commits. So there's been three changes. There's our CSS folder. There's the main.css. Index.html. All of our tabbings done, our indenting, and there's our link tag. So we've got all the changes done. It's tracked all the changes. And then somebody else could now go and download this. If you want, you can go to um, github.com slash my username, Professor Steve, slash learning GitHub. And you can open it in the desktop or download the zip, and you will have a copy of this repository. So you can play with that. And that really 
is what GitHub does in a nutshell. That's the full cycle. Now, I haven't gotten into branches and merges and pull requests and all that other stuff, but those will be videos that are coming in this series. Uh, hope you find that useful. Hope that gets you started with GitHub. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.